All right, welcome to chapter three of our class. Um, in this class, we have four learning objectives as usual. Um, I'll be looking at learning objective one and the rest in the subsequent videos, okay? So in this video, we will discuss the uses of process cost system and how it compared to a job order cost system. So let's do this. All right, so what is process costing? Uh, process costing is another system of costing that is used to accumulate costs for mass produced continuous homogeneous items such as cereal we have tissue papers we have soda we have um papers um anything that is continuous homogeneous in nature in production is what we term as um is what we use process costing for all right, so process costing and job order costing are very similar in three ways. So in chapter two, we talked about job order costing as a system of costing. Now we're trying to compare the process costing and the job order costing. Now, the manufacturing cost component is one way in which they are very similar. They both track the same cost element. So that is the direct material, direct labor, and then the manufacturing overhead. Another area where they are similar is the accumulation of materials, labor, and overhead. So they both accumulate costs in the same account, okay? So we said that when we accumulate costs, right, it's a debit to the manufacturing cost account. And that's your um raw material the factory labor and the manufacturing overhead and number three is the flow of cost so they both assign accumulated costs to the same account so they assign it to working process they assign to finished goods they assign to uh cost of goods sold now in what ways are they different okay so we said that they are similar they also could be different now, process costing and job order costing are different in the following ways. Um, the number of work in work in process inventory used uh, in the process cost system is more. So instead of one that we have in job order cost system, the process costing would include more work in process inventory accounts. Number two, um, documents used to track costs so for the job order cost we charge costs to the individual jobs and then summarize them in the job um, order sheets for the process cost system uh it summarizes costs in a production cost report for each department and then no job cost sheets are used okay for the process costing the number three is the timing to determine the total manufacturing cost um, in the job order cost system, costs are totaled when the job is complete. Whereas in the process cost system, costs are totaled at the end of the period. Then lastly is the unit cost computation. In the job order cost system, the unit cost is the total cost per job, right? Divided by the units produced for that job, okay? Whereas in the process costing, the unit cost is the total of manufacturing cost or the period divided by the equivalent units produced during the period. So in other words, it is the sum of material cost and conversion cost, each divided by their respective equivalent unit. And I don't expect you to understand those terms now. We're going to be dealing with them in learning objective three. Okay. All right. So we're going to do an example real quick. Um, again, I will always encourage you to pause your video and do it by yourself. Okay. Um, there's no pass mark with this, but that way you are able to see what you actually know, what you have actually comprehended and compare the answers. Again, if you have questions or you're not, um, you feel like you didn't understand why you got it wrong, please always reach out and I'm more than happy to explain. All right, so we have Robert Wilkins had the following, has the following list of statements about process cost accounting. 
All right, so the first one says, we're going to determine whether it's true or false. So I'll just put a T for true and an F for false. All right, so the first one says process cost system are used to apply cost to similar products that are mass produced in a continuous fashion. So that is true. Yay. Number two, it says a process cost system um, is used when each finished unit is indistinguishable from another. And that is true about process costing. Number three, it says companies that produce soft drinks, movies, and computer chips will use process costing. So this one has a snake in there. When I say snake, I mean something that is tricky and makes it a little bit difficult to know, uh, to miss the answer. To make it easy for you to miss the answer so we're going to say this is false and why is it false it's false because only the soft drinks and the computer chips that will use the process costing for movies what do we use we're going to use job order because it's specific okay so in this case we're going to say it is false number four in a process cost system cost attracts attract by individual jobs now this is going to also be false why is it false in a job order cost system cost attract by individual jobs not in process costing all right number five job order costing and process costing tracks different manufacturing elements and of course that is false because we already learned that job order cost system and process uh, system track the same three manufacturing costs so they track direct materials direct labor and manufacturing overhead all right number six both job order costing and process costing account for direct materials direct labor and manufacturing overhead and that would be true all right number seven cost flows through the accounts in the same basic way for both job order costing and process costing and that is true Okay. Number eight, it says in a process cost system, only one work in process is used. And that is false because we already established that um, we use more than one work in process account for the, uh, more than one work in process inventory account for process cost system. Number nine, um, in a process cost system, costs are summarized in a job cost sheet. No. That is not true. Only the job order cost in system uses the job cost sheet. All right. For the process costing, we use the production cost report for each department. And then number 10, in a process cost system, the unit cost is the sum of materials and conversion costs, each divided by their equivalent unit. Is this true or false? And that is true. All right. So I hope, you know, we got the same answers. Again, if you have questions or concerns, let me know. In this video, we went over process costing. We considered the similarities and differences um, between process costing and job order costing. And we also looked through an example. In our next video, we will go over process cost flow. And then we'll also explain the flow of cost in a process cost system and the journal entries to assign your manufacturing cost. I hope to see you there.